Hi everybody, I'm Melinda Gallant and I want to welcome you to a sandwich, a local Cape Conversation. We have got the fire chief here, an amazing young man who has lived in Sandwich, worked in Sandwich, and then became the fire chief. Oh my gosh, great guy. So come along, let's have another Cape Conversation. Hi everybody, I'm so excited to be here today. Ah, have I got the, the guest of all time for Sandwich. Chief J.J. Burke, welcome Chief. Thank you, Melinda. Our new fire chief, yay! <laughs> and you went to Sandwich High School? I did, I graduated in 1992. Have you lived in Sandwich all your life? Uh, pretty much, since 1978, so I was four. So oh my gosh. I'm not, a, I'm not a townie, but I'm close. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're close. <laughs> Right. Well, we moved here in 1980. Okay. And you're a year ahead of my daughter, Tessa. Correct. Yes. Isn't that correct? Yeah. Yep, that's correct. Oh my gosh. So here you are, hometown boy. Mm -hmm. The chief, the new chief they brought in, who was a great guy. I mean, I met him several times, thought he was a great guy. He left, and then they go, well, who are we going to get to do this? And they got you. How cool is that? It is cool. When you look back at uh, the progression of where I started, right out of high school, I was the custodian at the police department for a year. Yeah. And went to community college, worked for the police for a year, about a year and a half. And then uh, Chief Newman, who was the fire chief at the time, right. uh, encouraged me to come to the, the fire department, the fire side. So I ended up uh, starting my career there in 1995. And here I am. I pretty much held every position you can through the department. and. Uh, it is cool to, the first day I sat there and just for an hour in my office and stared at the wall saying, oh my God, now I'm, <laughs> now what? Now I'm actually sitting here, now what do I do? Um, but again, serving your community, serving the hometown, it's, it's great. It's a great feeling. Well, it must be great that you know what all these guys do. You kind of know where they're coming from. Yes. You know? Yeah. Um, what you do, even in a small town, is not an easy job. I, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, it's certainly not like working in New York City. Correct. But you're in a small town. <clears throat> Sometimes when you go on an emergency call, you know the people. Yes. Um, Sandwich has certainly grown since 1978. We moved here in 80. It's grown certainly since then. However, um, you don't maybe know everybody, but oh my goodness. Um, it must be difficult. Yeah, at times it is. I mean, I think it's a, it, there's good and bad to it. I think people are happy to see you yeah, in their yeah. time of crisis. And uh, obviously you respect their privacy. And, and um, it, can, it can get difficult. Uh, and again, being in a small town, you're, you're under a microscope all the time. I'm right. fully aware of that. Uh, <laughs> that I'm basically, I am on duty 24-7. Yeah. Uh, whether I'm at my daughter's field hockey game or I'm out to dinner. Uh, people recognize me. I represent the department in the town, so I'm very, very cognizant of that when I am out and about. Oh, that's, uh, and that's probably one of the wisest things you could do is to make sure that you remember that. Yep. Um, there are those folks who don't. <laughs> and sometimes they get in trouble. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but just knowing that, uh, you know, and it's, it's interesting when I'm out and about, sometimes people will ask me questions and they say, "Oh, I hate to bother you, but that you know, this is what I'm here for." When, sure. When you sign up for this job, sure. it, it is 24/7. It's a lifestyle. It is. Uh, it's a lifelong commitment. So I'm I'm happy to do it. So you also teach at BU or BC? Yep. I teach at uh, Boston University in the graduate school. Um, Wonderful. At the uh, at the medical campus. So mm -hmm. I'm on the where the Boston Medical Center is. I got my master's there in 2010. Uh, they asked me to stay Where'd you get on. your undergrad? So at Columbia Southern, which was uh, an, an online uh, fire science program that I was right. able to do. Oh, and excellent. Then, and then I would jump right into, uh, uh, I took my, my uh, graduate testing um, tests and I was able Before to- Before you forgot in. everything? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I better get on this now. So I was able to, uh, to get into the BU program. Oh, great. Uh, it was a newer program they were starting out. I was one of the first uh, 10 students in the program. And uh, then they asked me to stay on and teach. So Wonderful. Wednesday nights, I'm up there. Yeah. Uh, I get a new crop of students every year. It's, it's a lot of fun. Keeps me young, keeps me up on everything. Sure. Um, and uh, it's a nice break from, from the day-to-day -day stuff down sure. there. Sure, sure. So you do have a daughter. You mentioned her. Yes. Yes. Yep. Now, I see her picture on Facebook. She's absolutely adorable. Thank you. 
Uh, and I can tell right now you're not proud of her at all. No, no, she's done, <laughs> uh, she's done great. I mean, she's up at the STEM Academy, uh -huh. which I'm very pleased with and, and how things are going there and, and playing field hockey. And, and I give her a lot of credit because it's not easy when she has time with me. Sometimes we're, we're out and about and something happens and she has to, uh, she has to kind of stand by for a little bit. Yeah. But, um, you know, kids and social media and their phones and she's never once taking her phone out, taking pictures, she's right. very respectful, oh, and uh, which is good. It's hard at, it's hard at this age, but yeah. um, you know, she's wise beyond her years, and uh, I'm very proud of her in, in, in the way she conducts herself. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. That's terrific. So you have a lot on your plate. I do. Um, I keep driving by. I go to Katuit Center for the Arts a lot because mm -hmm. I, teach, I teach there. I teach improv there. Yep. It'd be good for your firefighters to take an improv class, to do improv. We go there every Christmas for the Christmas play. Oh, oh you do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, this year it's Mary Poppins. Excellent. Next excellent. year it's going to be Miracle on 34th Street, and I am directing. Oh, so excellent. I better we'll see be, you in a seat. We'll be at both. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, so uh, I see the, how the building is coming along. Um, so tell me about it. I mean, first of all, at first I was like, what? It didn't look right to me. But now that it's got the siding on, I can kind of see how it looks. Kind of picture it. Right, right. It's, it's beautiful. I mean, um, I love the dark gray and the white, and I'm assuming that's going to be the color. Yep, so that's the police side. So there's, oh, that's the police so side. So you'll see two buildings. The, yeah. the police building is a larger building um, uh -huh. that's closer to Quaker Meeting House Road if you're going down okay. to Tewitt Road. Okay. And then you'll see the steel framing of the fire station. Which is in the back. Yep, so that's about 50 yards to the south. You'll see it... Uh, and the, the difference between the two buildings is the fire station is prefab or pre-engineered. Oh. So just think, go back to when you were younger and basically it's like Lincoln Logs. Yeah, it, it well, is Butler Building. Yeah, everything shows up. Yeah. Um, and so the entire building's on site right now and they're going to start putting it together. Right. Um, so it takes longer, believe it or not, with pre-engineered yeah. to make sure everything is in the exact spot, mm -hmm. but then it'll actually go up quicker. Right. Uh, than the police and, and the policing have um, a lot more um, interior finish work. They have cell blocks they have to worry about. Right. Ours is pretty cut and dry. I always thought it was good they had the cell blocks in the basement when it flooded. I mean, they should be standing in water if you're that bad, yeah, right? If you're in a cell. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it will be nice to get out of the floodplain. Yeah. And, and like I've said to people, the, the four storms in March last year, uh, you know, the 20 plus years that I've worked um, in an apartment, I've only seen it flood once. And it was three storms in a row. We had water in the parking lot. I live in lot. Town Neck. Yeah, so, so you know. And no, uh, no. Uh, so it's going to be nice power. to get out. Um, you know, relocate the administrative offices out uh, above the floodplain, and and having a, a conference room would mm -hmm. be nice. Uh, you know, a lot of times we do interviews at town hall because mm -hmm. we don't have the space in the current fire station. So that's right. going to be a nice, uh, nice addition. And then being co-located with the police again, especially with the dispatch. Um, you know, we like to be nearby. I can walk next door and talk to the dispatch staff and talk to Chief Wack if I need to. So sure. it's going to be nice. So I guess the question is, what happens down downtown? So the is that going to be a substation? It for is. Police? So there'll be um, the fire building will have a, a, a lieutenant and two firefighters there all the time. Yeah. Uh, which is good. And uh, we've made some modifications down there slowly. When Chief Carrico was here, my predecessor he did a yeah. great job of upgrading some of the facilities downtown there. So we're used to having anywhere from five to seven people there at a time. Now we're only gonna have three there, so there'll be plenty of space. Um, I'm unsure what the plan is for the police uh, building next door, mm -hmm. uh, but I do know we are staying, uh, so we'll have coverage So there'll downtown. be an emergency downtown. Yep, there'll be an ambulance and a fire truck there. Right. Um, and you also uh, are manning the East Sandwich now as well. Correct. So on June 4th, we opened the East Sandwich Station. Right. Uh, and that was part of the master building project with the uh, police, sub, uh, police station and the fire substation on Katuit Road. So we are able to staff that, and that's reduced the response time in East Sandwich from about eight and a half minutes to three. Which is amazing. Which is unbelievable. And, uh, Especially and, if you're having a heart attack. Well, that any type of medical emergency, it's, <laughs> it just, you, know, you know, minutes seem like hours. Right. And, uh, and I think the good news is we have that station staffed. It's very cost effective with what they did. They took the existing structure, added a dormitory off of the mm -hmm. backside. And uh, I'm just excited about the possibilities of not only the response time, which is important, right. but we're working with the insurance service organization known as ISO mm -hmm. uh, to provide hopefully reduction in home insurance rates for because people in the sandwich. Because it's faster. Because it's faster response time. It is now yeah. staffed. Yeah. Um, so, 
But going through that, like the reorganization and the uh, reanalysis of that insurance rating takes some time. So we're still in that process right now. But um, one of the things I'm going to do is when we are done with our initial application, is to uh, post information to residents in East Sandwich that they oh, can- Oh, so they could use it. And they can use it for their insurance provider. Oh, that's great. Uh, the one thing that scares me is with different insurance providers that, you know, a lot of times you have to advocate for yourself and I want to arm the residents that are in that particular sure. district to say, these are the things you need to say to your insurance provider. And right. hopefully you'll get some reduction in rate. Oh, that's great. Um, so that, I'm hopeful that would for be that. great. Yeah. What about the Forestdale station? So the 101.30 will, um, we will maintain it probably at least for a year. It'll be the town's property. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure what they're going to do with that. Um, that has definitely seen its time. Yeah. Uh, it was. I remember a, when it was built. Oh, yeah, back in the <laughs> 70s. And it was donated by Camp Good News, the land. And and just imagine having three people crammed out there. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, it's going to be nice to be able to... Uh, get into the new station and, and we'll keep some some uh, supplies there for a bit and yeah. then it'll be the town's decision as to whether what they do sell it. it or whatever yeah might make a great restaurant uh, it's a good location I it's, a great location. it's a great location so location. you know uh it could be something funky and fun yep absolutely <laughs> absolutely so when you when are you moving so anywhere <clears throat> from uh i would say early spring we should be in the new station with any type of construction, you're going to have small punch list items. And I think, I mean, honestly, I, I prefer not to move in in the middle of the winter uh, yeah. when you're moving into a new station. So uh, when the building's turned over to us, I'm, I'm going to anticipate uh, early spring. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we'll be set up in there, and then uh, we'll shut down the 130 station, and, and yeah. it'll be fully operational. Oh, that's amazing. So it is going to be nice. nice. There'll be a lot of activity out there on that site. Yeah. Uh, I believe the rec department's going to have some yeah, stuff going Yeah, there's a skateboard in. out there, yep. I think, and all that. Yep, skateboard park. And it is a very centralized location, sure uh, for the, which is good. For the town to today mm -hmm. you know when we moved here there's a dirt road out there was, there, there was just basically hardly anything yep. you know um and uh you know the south sandwich canterbury area all of that forestdale has all grown yep. exponentially because of all the all the stuff that's there the, yeah and i live in lakewood hill so i am about a mile and a half from, yeah, from the new nice. station which is nice and and again there's a lot of activity when you look at that particular area of town now with the the Golden Triangle area, you have mm -hmm. um, Peters Palm Park, yeah. which is you know just south of our location. Uh, you have the Forestdale School, the Oak Ridge School, mm -hmm. a mile and a half in each direction. Right. So it, it is very centrally located, which is which is good. And our goal is to have a six minute or less response time to everybody in town. Sure. So we're gonna be pretty close to that. Uh, there'll be a few spots that'll be maybe a little bit north of, mm -hmm. of six minutes, but uh, overall, I feel very confident we'll be able to, to meet that standard. So, okay, so you're getting ready to move into a new station. Life is good. You've got your daughter. All that's good. So where do you go from here? I mean, you're chief. You're a young guy. I'm going to say you're young because my daughter is a, only a year younger than you, <laughs> which would be if I said you were getting older, then that would make me getting older, and yeah. I don't want to do that, no, we won't as do everyone that. knows. <laughs> so... So from here, it's uh, I, I love the teaching uh, up at the university. Um, you know, I'm 45 years old, so I you know technically I have 20 more years I could yeah I could hang around. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to hang around that long, <laughs> but um, but I think where we go from here is getting into the new station uh, mm -hmm. and then looking at a potential reorganization of the department. I see. Um, you know, uh, adding some titles and and moving some stuff around and really. Um, positioning the department for the next 15 to 20 years and, and what people have told me as chiefs that I have talked to is they say the first day you start as chief you should be planning for your departure and what they mean by that is what's your legacy going to be who are you right. training to take over mm -hmm. what's your vision communicating that vision to the rank and file and uh, and that's what I'm doing now you know being in there for a couple months and you kind of get a lay of the land and sure. had a good idea about how things were anyways but when you put a new station in the mix we're opening East Sandwich um, I think it's uh, I think I'm in, I'm in good position now to, to make some changes for the long term uh, oh, coming sure. down the road but sure. uh, I'm very happy I love working for the town here I uh -huh. would not want to work anywhere else mm -hmm. and um, so I'm excited for what the future holds well you know y your fate is a little bit wrapped up in what the the residents think mm -hmm. Um, I've never seen them turn down a firefighter or a police officer. Mm -hmm. um, 
which is kind of amazing, but they don't, they just don't. Um, so where, where do you, how do you, how do you let the town know what you need? I mean, uh, are you for doing PR? Um, yeah, I mean, you're very visible on social media, yep. which I think is fabulous. And I will say this, as somebody who was without power for three days, <laughs> well, no, a total of six days, if you want to do two of the storms, we were without power. And we're supposed to be on the trunk line for the police and fire. We just could not understand. Then I realized you guys have a giant generator. Yes, we do. <laughs> so yeah. so that, was, that was the difference. <laughs> we didn't difference. have the giant generator. Yep. Um, so they didn't get us back on as quick, but, um, you know, all of the stuff you put on Facebook, even though we were charging our phones in the car, mm -hmm. was amazing because it was like, okay, well, this is this and we can't go down that road and don't go here. And, you know, this area is without power. Oh, I heard Mashpee has partial power in this yep. area. And I mean, it was, it was quite amazing and wonderful and wonderful. And are you going to keep that up? Yeah, or? I think, uh, and I, and. Part of the credit goes to my students. That started like five or six years ago, and, and I was teaching a public information class, and I had a group of six students. They were all very young, just out of uh, undergrad. Uh -huh. And they were telling me that a lot of the information, and they were ahead of their time, that we don't read newspapers anymore. They said Nobody a lot does. of what you're gonna get is gonna be off the phone. So right. I said, well, I'm gonna try um, on my own Facebook page, just start doing some updates during storms and see what happens. And so my students are all over the country, so they all f follow me, and they said it was interesting to kind of watch, um, you know, the updates and how they were structured and how often you did them, and then it kind of took a life of its own, hearing from f friends whose parents are still living here, but they oh, are, yeah. they're all oh, over way. the country, and right. they're like, this is, this is great. Right. And, uh, and again, when you're, when you're without power and you're on your phone, as long as you know some information is coming, that's the first thing. Yeah. Yep. Timely yep. information and then the credibility of the information. Where right. is it coming from? So a lot of times now I'll do my own uh, Facebook post and then tag it right to the fire department so people see it's coming from me. So I own that information when I put it out. So if I am on Facebook and I am going to tell you people my age, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm also on Twitter and Instagram just yep. because... I, I am, mm -hmm. but most people use Facebook for sure. Yep. So should they go in and like the Sandwich Fire Department's Facebook page? Yep, if they can go in and, and then they'll get all the updates. Okay. So it's one of those things where, um, you know, we, we, we try to post a lot uh, on the Facebook page for the fire department. One of the things we started doing now is doing a daily summary. Oh, good. So you can see how many calls we've done sure. uh, for the day. And part of that is to keep the public informed as to kind of how busy we are. But also it acts as a digital log in case we have a failure sure. of any type of our um, you know, computer systems that we can go back by date and see what sure. the call volume was. So it's kind of a twofold uh, process there. But if the public wants to, wants to like that, we are not on Instagram yet we do have a twitter feed oh you do so um, you, you could do, and does that does facebook feed into twitter it does, and vice versa? It does. Yeah. so um but w the demographics and kind of the research that we've we've found locally here in sandwich is facebook seems to be the because we're older the primary my mother's all over it also and, <laughs> and uh and again getting that information out is important it was an interesting kind of uh experiment in the beginning and uh you know going on five six now the seventh year of just kind of posting updates and, and it's it's worked to our benefit. And, sure. uh, but again, with anything with social media, you have to be careful with content that you put oh, out there. Oh, of course there. you do. And, um, and even on your private page, you're, you know, you're still representing the department. So, right. uh, but moving forward, I, we're gonna continue that process. Um, I think it does provide, uh, you know, huge value to the, to the community. And, sure. and the one thing that I warn people about is don't necessarily report an emergency through our Facebook. Oh my goodness, and, yeah. And sometimes during storms, people will, will put stuff right. out there. We still encourage you to call 911, call right. dispatch, et cetera. Like if there's um, wires down correct. or something. Yep. Um, now, speaking of that, if I can dovetail off this for a minute, the, sure. the ability to text 911 is coming. Really? Uh, it was supposed to be here in 2015. Oh, I don't know. The it, way I text. It, 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 it makes me nervous uh, <laughs> because again, I think, I think um, and I've looked at this at the university level, and we've looked at it with students, is yeah. the potential is that you're gonna see a marked decrease in the actual phone calls. Right. And a mar you know, marked increase in people texting. Now, right. the dispatch center has to be prepared for that. You'll be able to send video and pictures. 
as part of the SMART 911, um, but it's going to be interesting to see how that how that plays out. Well, I would think video, okay, so let's say somebody is having a medical emergency, mm -hmm. they fall on the floor, the wife or husband is there, they, they, but they have to know how to do it. Yeah, I think the video is more for, and what we've seen on the policing side, I see. somebody suspicious is sure. following me. Um, you know, they'll take a, a video or picture of, I got uh, of the person or the okay. car. and again, I was going to say, how would you that. do it? You'd have to, that would be... Now, the younger generation, I think, would, is going to be all over it. They'll be oh, of course they quite will. savvy and be yeah. able to do that. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be interesting that that, that is coming. It was supposed to be here in 2015, and the, and the FCC, Federal Communications Commission, has pushed it off working with the cell phone providers, but yeah. I definitely see it right around the corner. Right. Our dispatch staff is already training up on it right. to be prepared for it, so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting. Okay, I'm gonna ask you for a couple of tips. Yep. So I was told that in my phone, my cell phone, mm -hmm. okay, that I should have the word ICE in case of emergency. Yep. And that should be whoever you want them to call in case of an emergency. Correct. Is that what people should do? Yes. Yeah, so we, I've actually used it twice, uh, and you go into the contacts. Now, there's a couple things with phones. A lot of people have thumbprint and or uh, passcode to right. get into the phone. Right. So, uh, but if we can access the phone under contacts, put in ICE, I-C-E. Yeah. And that's one of the things that we will look for uh, okay. and be able to make a phone call. Now, a lot of times that's if you're close to being incapacitated, we will, right. we will do that. We'll usually ask you first. Yeah. Uh, the other thing through Council on Aging is the file life, which is old school, but it's yeah. a it's a magnetized folder that goes on the refrigerator. It's red, and it has your medications, contact info, physician, et cetera, there that we can access if we're on scene. Right. Uh, we can make phone calls. So, but for the cell phone, ICE is, is definitely recommended. And, and with that, uh, in the wintertime, Ironically, when you're going outside, you're either getting the mail or the newspaper, I recommend you take your phone with you mm -hmm. in case you slip and fall outside. Right, right. And uh, we've had a couple of incidences where that has happened, where people have had their wow. phone. Wow. Well, but that's a good Thank thing. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, especially in the really, really cold weather. So, right. uh, but yes, highly recommend that that okay. be done. So, what other, what other things should we be doing? Should we be, I mean, they always say, isn't it October fire? No. Yep. Fire prevention week is next week. It's next week. Yep. Okay. So, uh, you know how smart I am. That's why he's here today. <laughs> so, so you, um, they always talk about, you know, an escape route and all that stuff. We don't have giant exit signs in our house. So just talk a little bit about that. So a couple things. When, uh, when we turn the clocks back, which is right around the next month or so, right. we recommend you change your batteries and oh, your yeah. smoke detector. So yeah. we always recommend that first. Um, carbon monoxide detectors, you should have those in your residence also. Right. One on every floor, one within 10 feet of the, the master bedroom. So can, it can be heard. Can you, um, but they can be a combo thing. They can. They can yeah, be a combination. Yeah, because we have the combos. And those are great. That's, yeah. that's money yeah. well spent. First um, alert. First alert. <laughs> oh, I did a... <laughs> A little plug for them. Yeah. Uh, but having those um, is, is critical. Then the escape routes, and we talk about that, multiple ways to get out of your house. And everybody knows their house well, right? right? So even in zero visibility, you may have an idea how to get out. But we also recommend when you're in public places looking at the mm -hmm. exit signs and having an alternative way to exit the building right. uh, in mind. And that's just, that's just good pre-planning mm -hmm. uh, when you're out there. Um, I still recommend people have a land-based phone that plugs into a wall, even though that is a dying... And uh, our kids make fun of us, but we haven't thrown ours away. Nope, and uh, I recommend everybody <laughs> keep it. Uh, if there's a massive failure, you still have the ability to plug right. in uh, to, the, to the phone system, so make sure that you, you have that. Um, and then emergency lights, batteries, you know, there's so much out there now. We use our phones. Yeah. That's, my phone has a flashlight, and, uh, but there, there are the disc lights at the Christmas tree shop, not to plug them, but you can put a simple uh, AA batteries in and you push them on and yeah. they'll be strategically placed throughout the house. Be very careful with candles. Um, yeah. People like candles. It's the number one cause of, of fires right. accidentally in homes. So be careful with that. Um, and then any storage in the garage, gasoline storage, propane storage in the wintertime, make sure your tank is empty. Uh, propane is heavier than air, so it'll seek the lowest parts of your house. Most of your heating elements and units are in the basement. Right. So if, if the atmosphere gets rich enough, if there is propane still in the tank, uh, there's a potential issue there. Um, one other thing I want to mention while we're talking about gas, there was an issue in, in the North Shore a couple weeks oh ago. Oh my gosh, that was so scary, and we have gas in our house now. Yeah, so, so I just scary. want, um, the, the, at exit 230 is, is the switching station for natural gas. So. That's that big thing as you're going up the hill. 
small, right? Correct. You see it over here. It looks like a, I don't know what, a moonscape got a, or yeah, something. Yeah, it's got a small outbuilding there. It's maintained by, by uh, National Grid Algonquin Gas. And uh, when that was going in, that was part of the service road gas line project a couple years ago. I was actually in fire prevention when that project started. Yeah. So I want to let the, the public know that we were very diligent when that was put in. Uh, asking for shutoffs that were even more strict than what the federal pipeline requirements were. Oh, really? So there's the ability to shut off segments, um, you know, distance-wise, it's usually every couple miles. You'll actually see in the service road yellow stakes coming out of the ground. Yeah. That's with the gas markers. So we asked for um, shutoffs that were even closer and, uh, and the ability to isolate and to purge quicker. Uh, so for the residents along the service road, when that gas pipeline project went in, um, and I watched what happened up on the North Shore, I was happy to, to say that we have uh, very strict control measures oh, that great. have been put in uh, for that. So. And how does that affect uh, the village area? Or does so that? not not necessarily that much. Okay. Um, the that pipeline was built to to uh, increase gas pressure and flow down Cape. Believe it or not. Yeah. So. Um, That's so, why they wanted to go down the service. Correct. Route. Yep. So, uh, so it runs down to the town line. I'm not sure if they've continued it uh, from there, but at least there, there we do have control points now. We have contact information. Uh, that gas comes all the way from Louisiana, makes its way up Isn't here. That amazing. And, and, uh, <laughs> and again, the the issue in uh, in the North Shore and Andover and Lawrence was uh, out of Ohio, I believe, was the, that, initial, yeah. uh, the initial spot. So yeah. I just want the public to know that we, we are definitely on that. We work with National Grid every year. We do mm. a, an exercise every year to test our plans. Mm. So it, uh, it was a good reminder, though, when we saw what was going on up in the North Shore, that uh, just to double check what we have here and, and well, we feel comfortable. Um, we remodeled our house and we have we have gas in our house now but i i was very surprised because obviously the house was pre-built it was supposed to be mm -hmm. um i was very surprised that they put the gas line on the outside around and it's and it was flexible it was yep. and and we were like well shouldn't this be <laughs> something a little more sturdy <laughs> And they said, no, 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 it'll last longer it does and it doesn't corrode and, yep. and all of that. So. And, and the, the pressure that comes into your, uh, to your house is, is a step-down pressure from the big, the big pipeline. Yeah. So that new flexible pipe is, is definitely uh, the way to go. It's yeah. definitely yeah. safer. Uh, well, we really questioned it. So. Oh, yeah, I don't blame you. And, it, and again, a good installer will, yeah. will outline that uh, yeah. for you to let you know. Well, I'm, sh I'm sure he was talking to me, but I was thinking, my head, this doesn't look good. This doesn't right. look good. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, he was an ex. Well, actually, it was the gas company that did most of the installation yep. and, for and us. And they're good about notifying us, and we come out. Yeah. And, and, and you we'll did. I mean, the fire department, yep. whoever was at, at that time, I don't know if it was you or not. It was, no, I believe it was Don Campbell at the time yeah, who came yeah. out, um, yeah. who was, uh, he's since retired also yeah. but uh, that's the interesting part about fire prevention and I spent nine years yeah, a long there time, a long yeah. time and uh, and you learn an awful lot about um, you know educating the public in that position because yeah. people have questions oh yeah and you have to have the ability to say I actually don't know the answer to that yeah. I'll get back to you <laughs> yeah. um, and it, it's very good preparation for upward that's mobility great. when when especially in my position now, yeah. I feel very comfortable yeah. having that background being able to uh, not only problem solve but be able to communicate with the public that's great well I can't believe it our talk has gone so quickly <laughs> I could do a whole nother show with you <laughs> Um, we haven't even talked, uh, touched on your high school years. <laughs> you can leave those alone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we don't want to get into those. There might be an investigation. That's right. <laughs> um, thank you so much. You're very welcome. So, so much for being here. I think you've helped us. You've, given a, you've told us a lot about what's going on. Yes. Is there going to be a party when the... There will, will be an opening. Yep. Okay, great. Um, and All there'll right. Be, uh, there'll be both departments will be there, and there'll be a ribbon cutting, and, oh, uh, and hopefully it'll be nice weather, and we'll yeah. do it in the springtime. Excellent. And when we have those big storms now, if my power goes out, it's not going to help me to be on the same trunk line as you guys, is it? Nope. Nope. <laughs> but I'll okay. post updates and let you know. All right. That'll, that would help. That would help for sure. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you, Melinda. Good to see you. Good to see you. Wow. Wasn't Chief J.J. Burke terrific? What a great guy. When you see him on the street or in his car, wave, say hi, ask him a question. He is so available, and that is terrific. I learned a few things today, too, and I hope you did as well. So thank you for joining me, and I will see you on another Cape Conversation.